Hi, and welcome to the Zon Academy. Today we're going to go through nesting a Lucitone denture base in the new Asika Composer 2.0. To start off in the new Composer, we'll start with the same as before with selecting our new job button, this little blank page icon. And normally we would see any actual printers that we have connected in this list in the middle. But in my case, I don't have a printer nearby, so I'm going to select a virtual machine just for practicing. Over at the bottom, I'll need to select the material. It will remember the last material that was chosen, but you can browse down through the list. If the material you're working with is not in here, you can go to the Asiga website to find new material options. So in this case, I'm going to stick with the Lucitone base. And for this material, they recommend to stick with the 100 micron for the base. And they would use the 50 micron for the teeth. For most printers for this material, we would stick with the universal tray. And we'll hit OK to start up the job. The layout has changed slightly but you may notice that a lot of the icons and controls remain the same. You'll still right click to rotate, left click to pan and zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. All of the minor visual buttons are on the top bar for resetting our view in different directions. And our major buttons are on the left bar now for bringing in our units and manipulating them. So the first of these is the one I need to bring in, our STL files. I'll click this, add parts, and select the files to browse for wherever they're saved. In my case, I'm going to grab the space file, and then I'll click open to load that in. From here, I want to adjust the orientation. The orientation of denture bases can vary quite a bit between different resins, so I highly recommend you check your instructions for use document that comes from the manufacturer for each resin, just to make sure that we're nesting following best practices. To start off for the Lucitone in particular, they always recommend that we design it with these bars attached to it, which does have to happen during the design side of things. We can't add these bars after the fact. And for the orientation, Lucitone recommends that we have this angled at somewhere between an 80 to 70 degree angle. So to start this off, it does look like it's come in mostly flat. So I'd want to get an angle where I can see that from the side view. If it was not already flat, I'd adjust this by selecting the unit, just left clicking. So it has this bounding box around it. And then when you right click, just make sure to right click and hold for a second. And then it will let you move and manipulate. If I were to right click and drag immediately, it just manipulates my view. But let's undo a couple of clicks. So if the STL file did not come in already perfectly horizontal, you would just want to adjust it. So it starts off that way. From there, we go to the second button on the top bar, Rotate Parts. This gives us some more fine-tuned rotation tools, so I can decide which axis I want it to pivot on. So let's say the X, which is this red line and then I can determine a specific amount of degrees I want it to tilt. So in our case, somewhere between 70 to 80. Lucitone does recommend in the instructions for use 80 degrees, but I have found that oftentimes that is a little bit too vertical and it does not have supports all the time. So I've personally found better success at the 70 degree angle. So undo, then tilt it again to the 70 degree. They recommend that it could either be a facial side down or a posterior down. I find I can get the sprues a little bit less invasive if it's posterior down. So that's the way I've tilted it. To move this unit so that it's back inside the build area, I can left click and drag. Just make sure to again left click and wait a second before moving. But otherwise, when I go to add support, it will automatically adjust the height if it was too low. So I don't necessarily have to fix that immediately. Another way to fix the position of units, we've got the auto place button, where by default it just uses some default settings to apply. 
but if you wanted to adjust them like we could in the older version of Composer, you can click Advanced and it has all of the same menu options, but we'll just click Apply. We then have the Supports tool, which again, if you prefer to just use the default settings without messing around with anything, you can leave it as is and click Apply. But otherwise, there are a couple of settings that we might want to adjust under Advanced. So the first thing that I double check is for Lucitone materials. It may come in with this option, Tallest Support On, which means that when it creates supports, it will not add any that are taller than, in this case, 8 millimeters, which means it will never have supports higher up on the file. I do prefer to start off with some automatic supports before manually adding some. So I turn that off, and now if I click Apply, it should add quite a few more supports and support all the way to the top. From here, to modify things further, I'm going to go into the Add mode. I'm going to go to my top view and click it again to switch to the bottom view. And then I'm going to add some new supports just all along the edges of the denture just by left clicking in the add mode. If you're having issues with printing where the base is staying on the plate, but parts of the unit or the unit itself is falling off, it usually has to do with not enough support or not strong enough supports. So if that's the issue you're running into, I consider adding more than it's already got. Once we've added supports all the way around, in addition to the automatic supports, we can then go and get this ready to print. To send this to printer, it's the little icon on the left. The bigger one for the printer shape itself, and the build wizard has changed slightly in that it's two pages instead of four pages like it was in the older version. But all of the options are the same. This first page, I want to confirm did I choose the right material earlier? Was it the right layer thickness? And I can give the job a name, which is what I'll see when I go to print this on the printer screen itself. The next option for presets, I'd want to take a look at this fast print mode. It does speed up the printing time a good amount for most materials, but it's only been thoroughly validated with the Asiga brand resins. People have found that it does work on some non-Asiga brands, but with Lucitones specifically, I tend to prefer to print without this mode on, so it prints a little bit safer. The next step gives us some extra options that you shouldn't have to mess around with for the most part. The first section with the base plate, typically most systems default to 0.3 millimeters with a shadow for the base plate. And what that means is that the base that goes underneath the supports that's actually attached to the metal, this will just be a silhouette of our unit itself. If you're having issues where everything's falling off, not just the unit itself, but all of the supports in the base plate are not attached to the metal in the end, then these are some of the settings that could help. I'd increase my base plate thickness slightly, and I'd switch it so that it's not just the silhouette of the unit, it's the bounding box, which means that instead of following the shape of all these supports as a silhouette, it will fill this entire box shape all the way to the corners giving it a little bit more surface area to adhere to the metal. Otherwise, if things are still falling off, there could be something physical like the calibration that we want to address further down our settings. We've got some advanced values that you shouldn't have to mess around with. These are all preset based on the manufacturer's specifications that we downloaded from the Asiga website. So I'll tend to leave these as is, and when I click this print button at the bottom, it would calculate and then send to the printer. And that's everything. Thank you.